There are no penalties. Nothing is offside. And everything is fair game. This is the Gloves Are Off. Joining me as always, Brian Kern. How are you doing, Brian? Water. All Water. Right. Okay. All right. How am I doing? Oh, Kyle Mulligan's in the house. That's I'm jacked. Right. It's no Ted DiBiase. No. You... Million dollar. Ooh, baby. Ooh. Bring it on, Kyle. This oh. is the day I've been waiting for, brother. All right. Well, you beat me to the punch, but this is Kyle Mulligan. Kyle, tell everybody out there a little bit about yourself, the role you kind of play in the sporting community here in town. Uh, for me, I'm the head golf professional at the Lloydminster Golf and Country Club and uh, the head coach of the Lloydminster Bantam AAA Heat. And, you know, it's an honor to be on the set with such a a brave hockey player and and a stud like Brian Kern who had a solid seven goals. Don't be kissing up to me now, man. Um, we're looking forward to a, a good show today. How many did he say? Seven goals. He said seven. Seven more than you ever had. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Bam. Here we Bam. go. Bam. Well, let's uh, let's get right into things. We've got. I've got my buzzer ready. We're gonna get into dump it change. As always, if you guys don't like a topic, you each have the opportunity to dump one and it change and move on. But first up, we got to talk about Mr. Pat Burns because. It seemed like uh, the social networking world sort died, of reared, yeah, <laughs> reared its ugly head again. I mean, honestly, could you believe this? It's gone to the point now where people are being reported that they're dead. <laughs> and somebody like Pat Burns, I mean. Go ahead, Kyle. He <laughs> called Bob McKenzie from TSN and told him, I'm not bleeping dead. I love it, though. You know, Pat Burns is one of the best coaches in the NHL, and it's unfortunate that you know, the reporting world is now all on social media networking. Yeah. But it's, it's unbelievable how quick things will spread. Um, you know, the slightest little thing can spread like, wire like wildfire. And it's just, uh, it's insane. Yeah. And it's too bad because Pat Burns doesn't deserve something like that. No. I mean, I'm going to agree because I know the guy knows, I played when he coached too, so it's way back. But, you know, he was, he, he was a... Was I born yet then? No. No, you weren't even born yet. <laughs> and don't worry, Kyle, when you stumbled there, she doesn't. Often. There you go. <laughs> the words. So, you know what? He's such a great man, did such a great job, uh, has a Stanley Cup, and it's so sad to look at him right no, now. It I is. mean, I remember this big, robust, tough c cop. He was a yeah. cop. Yep. And what, you know, and to say he was dead. Reporters. Get it right. I have to stop you there because we have to move on to the next topic. Let's talk about Haley Wickenheiser, the 32-year-old best female player in the world, is hitting the books and she's going to hit the ice. She's going to play for the University of Calgary Dinos. What can we expect out of this move? I'm pretty impressed. That takes some guts to do. To go back to school? You know what? I think Both, she's, to go back to school. No, and to but play. I think she is such an ambassador for the for young girls, mm -hmm. and to do this is just going to a lot, let people know that you know there's never too late to go back to school. She's the best female player in the game. Congratulations, Alan. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Congratulations, you're making a, a, a big impact on young people. Well, Aww, and you know what I think it's side. gonna do. There was a report that came out about the University of Calgary, about how their ranking in in Canada had dropped. And it, you know, it's going to do good for the University of Calgary. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good for the hockey program. And hopefully they can get some recruits out of it. So thumbs up to him. Yeah, I will, because what's negative about it? Yeah. no. Unless you want to bring up something negative nope, about it. No, not at all. I would like to talk about a major acquisition for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Stevie Beggs inked a deal with my team. Sorry, Riders fans. Uh, but really, I, I, I do have a little bit of compassion for you people in Rider Nation. But... I'd like to hear where you guys weigh in on this. Do you think that Rider Nation should feel slighted or be disappointed? You know, the, the Rough Riders have nothing they can say. Um, he's a free agent. He went to the NFL on a contract, came back. Um, you know, you don't get to keep his rights in, in the CFL. Um, you know, he went to where the money is, and unfortunately money talks in this league, and the Riders didn't offer him what he wanted, nope. so, so he's gone. Do you realize that's 25 seconds of air that you're never going to back, <gasps> back talk about the Hamilton Tiger Cats? <laughs> oh. Do you realize that? I hear that. Yeah, you know what though? On the subject, since we're there, and I didn't get a chance to dump it, I will say <laughs> that <laughs> bottom line is, you know what? It's making your team the best you can make it. Yep. And that's all it's about. And everybody's doing it. Wake up, everyone! I think everyone knows that. Congratulations! They got the bagsters. The bags is back. All right. Uh, moving good along. Too. He is. I'm sorry, defensive end. I'm happy he's. I'm. Hey, yeah. he'll take it to the house. Not worried about that. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about Reggie Bush because last week we talked about the fact that there, uh, the Heisman Trophy Trust was threatening to take his award away. Well, this past week Reggie Bush says, you know what? I'm going to give it back before you can even take it away from me. I'm going to give it back now. 
although it's sort of like pleading no contest, he's not admitting guilt. Uh, I still feel like, why are you giving the award back then? Did you watch the NFL last night? Yeah. Monday night? Did you see the announcer said that he should never have given it back? Yeah, well, a lot of people have said that. A lot of people have said that. What a classy move makes Reggie Bush look so much better in the light of a lot of people. See, then I'm flipping what you're saying on its head because that's exactly why I think he did do it. I think he was, he was at fault, and instead of letting that side of things get blown out of proportion, mm -hmm. he flipped it and said, you know what, I'm going to beat you to the punch. It's the same thing when somebody says, you're going to be fired, but we're going to let you resign. Well, where I, do you go with the story? Where do you go with the story now? He, he just killed it. He killed the no, big story. I think it was a smooth, like, media happy kind and of And I think he's a good, good young person that made a mistake. And again, we said right. it last time we were on the show, it's about integrity. Mm -hmm. That award is also about integrity. Mm -hmm. So, Kyle, go ahead and fire away. You know, again, it's the right move. Not only is it the right move for Reggie Bush, but it's the right move for his team as well. They don't need the media scrutiny. They don't yeah. need this mm -hmm. to be a problem. And he doesn't need to be a problem either. They got bigger things to focus I on. I like okay. it. The reporters got zapped. Yeah. yeah. I was ready to zap that one, but we do get to move on. <laughs> we, to um, we are going to move on here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Tennessee. Uh, they got a little <laughs> bit of a problem going on. Bruce Pearl. Now, you deal with recruitment mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, Bruce Pearl has caught a lot of heat for not only the way he conducted himself, but also for lying about it. Now, I did watch his heartfelt apology, and I could sort of sympathize with him, but do you feel any sympathy for this man? No. Okay. Is he the Reggie Bush right now? <laughs> really? Is he Reggie Bush? How do I deflect this? Yeah. He could have told the truth. Now he's coming back to make things all good. Yeah. You know, I, man, you broke it. But he's not the only one. Come on. We have all the universe. But then are NCAA violations like talking to players too soon? Are, are these ever going to go away? I mean, Brian, you, you guys deal with coaches all the time. No, it, it's never going to go away. Uh, you want to have the best player come to your organization. You're going to do whatever you can to get them. And sometimes you're going to bend the rules to see how far you can go. You got caught. Yeah. You got and, caught. And, and, you know, it's not, I'm not against him mm -hmm. at all. Tennessee's just taken a beating the last few years, but whatever. Um, the bottom line is, is that he just got caught. And however their process of doing what they did, something broke down and finally got caught up to. But I don't think you come out after the fact that you've been nailed for this, 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 and then mm. go, okay, and now I lied. Yeah. Well, what, well, does that make you better? Or I don't know. I, I really don't. I think you should have just left it alone. Okay, well, we have to leave you all alone for a quick commercial break, but we will return with a whole lot more in our next segment of Dump and Change. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. Things are getting heated. The spit's flying. I'm kind of glad that I'm in this chair so that I don't have to get, you know, doused by anything. Uh, we're going to get right back into it. I'm getting the eyes are rolling. I need a me. face mask when she talks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got it. We're going to go back to uh, NFL football. This story just broke this morning. Uh, New York Jets wide receiver Braylon Edwards got, sorry, I'm going to say it busted for a DUI. The guy's driving in the west end of Manhattan. Keep Manhattan in mind. Cops pull him over for windows that are too tinted. Roll down the windows, catch a whiff of his breath. He's 0.18. That's twice the legal limit. Ha Nikolai Habi Bulan, I know we've talked about oh, him yeah. on the show before. You're in the west side of Manhattan. There are cabs blowing by you every three seconds. I mean, honestly, when is this or is it ever going to stop? What is it going to take? It, it, it's true. The rules do not apply to celebrities. Um, you know, Nikolai Happy Bullen, there's no, no problem. He can do whatever he wants, gets caught. Why should it be an issue? Now, Edwards, this morning, um, you know, take a look in the mirror. You're not above the rules of the world and society. And, and take responsibility for what you're doing. Yeah, and, and, and I agree on a lot of that. I mean, he's not, they're not. Mm -hmm. But on the same token, you know, I look at younger players, so this is a different example of someone with a lot of money. They think they're bigger and better. They need a lesson in life. That's why they have these three strikes and stuff like that. Yeah. I believe that, yeah, they don't know how to deal with a lot of this or the celebrity or the status of it. And God knows what he was doing at that time. I could pretty well take any good guess on that. But should he get another chance? I, I really don't, I think if anyone was put in the same shoes as he was put in or any athlete making that kind of money, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. You deserve okay. that second chance, but okay. you're right, Manhattan. There's yeah. I, I yeah. was there. There's yeah. a cap. Yeah, cap. exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're going to stick with sort of second chances. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about Michael Vick. Uh, he had his first career start since his, you know, return. It, it went very well for him. Eagles took it 35-32. Um, he was 21 for 34. Now, we know that Cobb is going to be healthy, so in fairness to Reed, too, he said, 
going into it. You know, just because you're starting doesn't mean he's turning into the number one guy. But I think this was a, a positive turning point, anyways, for Michael Vick. And is this sort of the is this, you know, the climax? Is, is everything sort of over and we can sort of move forward? Is he back? I think he's back. Uh, he's out of the dog fighting business. That's a good thing. Might be into cat fighting now. I'm not sure, oh but whatever. Gosh. I actually like him. I think he is such. I hope he learned his lesson because mm -hmm. what an explosive quarterback there is. I mean, I listen to those guys, the talk and the analysts. There is not another quarterback like him that can move, that has that much that makes the game exciting. Yeah. Hopefully, Mike, you learned your lesson and you're a good. I think he's a real good person. And he just grew up now and got a lesson. What an expensive lesson, but a yeah. great lesson. Okay, Kyle, let's uh, switch gears. You get first dibs on this one. Uh, calling this one Jets vs. Girls. <laughs> New York Jets. Remember oh. this one? How yep. can we forget about this? Girls oh, yeah. in the locker room. But were you surprised or did you just laugh it off? Was it blown out of proportion? You know, again, it's just blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. It's professional athletes being playing jokes on the reporters and um, you know, I think they just got to let it go. It's it's not a it's not a big deal at the end of the day. There, there's no disrespect. There's no concern. Um, just let it go. Too political, man. <laughs> let your feelings out. Truthfully, though, you did know, you see what she was wearing? I'm more like, why cannot a male reporter go into a female's locker room? Well, they, uh, Do they? I'm sure they could. Why would well, How come there's never any story about that? Well, I that's mean, a good point, though. Yeah, that is a I, good I point. didn't know that. I'm being very honest. Yeah. Can a male go into a female's locker room when they're changing? I mean, you go into a bunch of football players already, uh, and yeah. they're showering in yeah. that, and a girl walks in looking, whoa, hey, professionalism. Well, it's all about professionalism, though. Yes. I have been in countless locker rooms, every sport, both genders, you know, no question, but there is a way to conduct yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think it go, it, it has to go both ways. You know, your players have to conduct themselves professionally. And did you see her? Yeah. yeah. Whoa. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, I think she was clear. The only reason why she was in the locker room, TV Azteca, was because, mm. you know, Mark Sanchez of Mexican descent. So clearly she's not, this isn't familiar territory for her either. Mm. So... Anyways, we're going to move on. Enough of that one. Let's talk a little hockey. You guys are, I don't know. I wanted to little hear little. your point on that no, one. No, I'm done. Uh, let's talk about uh, the, the tie breaking in the standings, the ruling that the NHL has made. Uh, regulation time wins, um, not simply overall wins, because the NHL apparently not a big fan of the shootout victory. Kyle, you talked to me before we even came on set. You're not a fan. You know, I'm not a fan. Um, why, 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 why? You know, it, it's just, it's. How can you determine an entire season on a shootout? Um, you know, it's to me, it's just it's, it's unfair. The fans get on their feet. They're cheering. They're pumped. You know what? You you've got the entire league standings on the line. You yeah. know, last year, look at the playoffs: New York Rangers versus the Philadelphia Flyers. Goes down to oh, a shootout. You know, yes, the Philadelphia Flyers win, and Scott Hartnell gets into the playoffs for Lloyd Minster. But who? It's not the way to solve it. There has to be a better way, and, and I just don't agree. Yep, it's gone. Simple. That Real, no, no. I mean, it really is. I mean, th you know what? I think they can learn from the AJ and some of the minor hockey leagues mm -hmm. going to three on three. Oh, yep. I love that. The other That's night when more I was exciting. At your game, oh, I it's way more fun it. to watch. And it's a lot and of fun. And the, the thing is, is and there's two two sides of it. There's the team that like our team that doesn't have a ton of scoring versus uh, Spruce Grove that has six guys that can score. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we could outplay them a whole game. They go to a shootout and well, okay, well we should have won. Blah blah blah. I mean, you can cons and pros, but I don't like the shootout, especially for the National Hockey League okay. and the Olympics. Well, it's a gimmick. Fair enough. Gloves are off. Uh, not a fan. You get thumbs down on NHL for that one. Okay, we have to take a break, but stay tuned. We will be back with our offside onside discussion and our extra frame.